When I say I hate these lenses, I don't mean specifically this Laowa Proteus 2x anamorphic lens. I mean these type of cine lenses. Why? Well, just look at it. It's big, it's heavy, it's a pain to deal with. You gotta have a cage to shoot with it properly so you don't bend your lens mount. You need a focus puller, probably even need an external monitor, an adapter. It just all starts adding up so fast and gets so expensive. But then again, it's really hard, especially when it's anamorphic because it gives you footage that looks like this. <laughs> You? Oh, it's a little dark here. I'll set you guys down right here. And so why New York? Well, it's because it's the Big Apple and because this is one big lens. <laughs> I don't know, it, I, I thought it sounded good, but you know, the more I think about it, it doesn't sound that good. Before we go out to shoot, I brought an extra little bag and uh, this is uh, Brevita, Brevita. I'm sorry, I probably botched the name. I have no idea. I just wanted to say though that I love my Peter McKinnon bag over there, but sometimes it's just a little big and I know they have another one, but these guys sent me this bag and look, it works just like perfectly. Now, full disclosure, they did send me this bag. They didn't pay me though to say that or anything like that. And I never really use a second bag. I normally just have my Peter McKinnon bag, but I'm trying to be kind of low key. So I'm excited about this little bag and it was actually worked out great, better than I expected. If this bag interests you, I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out. Yeah, so I did go out and shoot with that lens in New York, but unfortunately 90% of that footage was soft and not really usable. Again, not because of the lens, it was user error. Learning experience for me and it's a great segue into me talking about what this lens has to offer. Basically what happened is the back focus was off. I don't know if I received the lens like that or if it shifted when I was traveling to New York, but regardless, this lens has an extremely easy way to fix this instead of having to go through the struggle of shimming it. So while I'm fixing the lens and figuring out what I can go film with it, Let's talk specs here. This lens in particular is the Laowa Proteus 45 millimeter, two times anamorphic with a silver flare. You can also get the lens in a amber flare or a blue flare. It's super 35 and is offered in PL or EF mount. The maximum aperture is T2, very impressive. And its minimum aperture is T22 with 10 aperture blades. It has a 114 millimeter outer diameter for matte boxes and a filter thread of 105 millimeter. It's a nice little touch as well since typically these cinema lenses, there is no filter thread on them. And lastly, it weighs a whopping 5.3 pounds. I know, it's a big boy. Which to be fair, these cinema type lenses are typically pretty heavy and big. There's also a full lineup of Proteus lenses that are available and they just announced a few more focal lengths. Oh, and the price comes in at about $5,000 per lens and I believe if you buy it in a set, you get a little bit of a discount. I could be totally wrong on that, so don't take my word for it. That may have just been for like the pre-order thing. But some things I like about the lens is the really long focus throw. I think it's about three degrees or something like that. It does have kind of like a loud click once you get to the end of the focus throw. Like, listen to this. Now keep in mind, I'm like barely moving it to the end of the focus throw too. Like, listen. 
Like I, I was barely moving it and it still made that click noise. Now it being a T2 lens was nice, especially when it comes to some of the footage you're about to see. And I was pretty impressed with the minimum focus distance since the minimum focus distance on anamorphic lenses is typically around three feet. This one is just barely short of two feet at one foot, 10 inches. But my favorite feature on the lens, which basically saved this video, full disclosure, Laua was so gracious to send me this lens and let me use it for quite a while. I really appreciate that by the way. I don't get to keep it though, and all my thoughts and opinions are my own. So this thing right here, it's kind of hard to see, but it says FA. That stands for focus adjustment. It was literally as easy as loosening the little screws and spinning this until the image was sharp. Now, I bet you're dying to see some more footage out of this bad boy. So let's watch them. I wanna talk about why it's hard for me to resist these types of lenses. I'm talking about anamorphic lenses here. Now we all know about the characters that anamorphic gives. We have flares that streak across the screen, we have oval bokeh, and of course that wide aspect ratio you're seeing here. But for me, it's not really about any of those. The reason for me is how the squeeze affects the field of view. Bear with me here for a minute. Basically when you are shooting on, let's say a full frame, 35 millimeter, 1.6 times anamorphic lens. We're just using that as an example here because it'll be easier to understand with the comparison I have. And when you do that, you get the look of a 35 millimeter lens, obviously, but because of the 1.6 times squeeze, you will actually be seeing as wide as about a 22 millimeter lens. Here's a comparison of a 35 millimeter anamorphic lens versus a 35 millimeter spherical lens. This is why for me, Anamorphic is so cool because if you just crop the top and bottom of a 35 millimeter spherical lens, it's just not the same as shooting anamorphic. Here's an example at 22 millimeters so you can see what I'm talking about here. Now the math gets a little messy here since this Proteus is a 45 millimeter lens, but it's super 35. So we're technically getting the look of about a 67 and a half millimeter lens. But when you factor in the two times squeeze, it comes out to about 34 millimeters. Oh, and as far as coverage goes when it comes to full frame, you can get a bit more coverage if you shoot open gate, for example, or full frame, but it will introduce some distortion and other things that you should consider. But maybe that's not an issue for your project. Now, my final thoughts. The flares are not really my favorite, but I still don't mind them. Besides that, the lens is fairly sharp, wide open. It has great bokeh, and I think these are a great option to consider if your project calls for lenses like these, especially given the price tag. I mean, 5,000 in terms of cine anamorphic lenses is pretty reasonable. Just remember that they are heavy, but it offers a great solution for back focus adjustment, different flare types, and a great selection of focal lengths, especially after their announcement at NAB. If these lenses interest you, I will leave a link in the description so you can check them out. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and subscribe so you can be notified of future uploads. Till the next video though, happy filming.